Hello and welcome to this conversation on budget expectations. I'm Dipti Deshpande, Senior Economist here at Crisp. Demand recovery, investment push, tax relief to corporate India, policy recommendations for the medium term. The list for this year's budget expectations is simply endless. And why not? The COVID-19 pandemic hit the Indian economy very hard. And now with the, the economy in its nascent phase of recovery, all hopes are pinned on budget 2021. Today I'm joined by DK Joshi, Chief Economist Krisil, and Prasad Koparkar, Senior Director Krisil Research, to discuss some of the most critical priorities from budget 2021. Welcome Prasad, and welcome DK. DK, if I may begin with you, it's been a year since the pandemic hit us. How do you now assess the nature of this recovery more specifically, what are the nuances of this recovery that you have seen? Well, we expect the Indian economy to grow at minus 7.7% this year, which is better than our earlier forecast of minus 9%. And this uh, better performance is due to several factors, uh, topmost being that COVID-19 has been under control. Uh, the government spending has returned. And also, I think the vaccination has now started, which is going to improve confidence uh, going ahead. Uh, for the next fiscal year, which is 21-22, we expect growth to rebound to 10%. Uh, and this will be supported by, of course, a very, very weak base effect. And also, I think the rising tide effect of, uh, of, of pickup in global economy. And if COVID-19 does stay under control and government is generous with its spending, then I think there could be an upside to the 10% to the GDP forecast for next year. About the contours of recovery, uh, well, COVID-19 has given a booster shot to trends towards digitalization, e-retail, uh, but it has also amplified many of the problems that were already there in the economy and introduced some new ones. Uh, I'm going to talk about just two of these. The first is the dichotomy between the rural and the urban economy. The rural economy accounts for almost half of India's GDP and 65% of its population. It has done much better than its urban counterpart. Structural factors and government support uh, are clearly responsible for this. Uh, the rural population is less dense, so the virus spreads uh, at a much slower speed there. Agriculture, which has not been impacted by the pandemic at all, accounts for about 30% of the GDP. And together with that, the food inflation has been high, which means that uh, farmers have been getting somewhat better price uh, for, their, for their products. And I think even if you exclude the agricultural economy, even the non-agriculture economy is, is more resilient because the share of services in the rural economy is much smaller than it is in the urban economy. And we all know that services have uh, been, uh, been hit much, much more than the, uh, than the manufacturing sector. And then finally, in a pandemic, government support is important and it has a big tilt towards the rural economy. And this is clearly visible in the fiscal numbers. The second dichotomy I want to point out is on the manufacturing versus services sectors. Clearly, manufacturing sector has not been impacted that badly as the services have been because manufacturing is not contact based. Uh, what we have also seen is that, uh, that people have substituted their spending on services which they could not indulge in the, uh, to, towards manufacturing sector. So that has given some additional boost to, uh, to, to consumer durable segment. Even government on its part, I think, allowed the people, uh, its employees to use the LTC uh, for, for purchase of consumer durable goods. So that also led to a shift from, uh, from, uh, from tourism towards, uh, towards, uh, towards manufacturing sector. And finally, I think those who invest in stock markets have benefited tremendously from the wealth effect uh, of uh, that, that the rise in the Sensex has, has given. Thank you, DK. So Prasad, given that the uh, recovery is somewhat better than what we had earlier expected, what is your assessment on corporate India? Also, what's your outlook for the next fiscal? Thanks, Dipti. I think I would like to make three uh, specific points. So if I look at FY21, uh, reflecting what is happening on the macro side, uh, we also expect the performance to be better than earlier expected. So for example, we expect corporate revenues now to decline just about by 10% compared to an earlier estimate of 16%. On the margin side, the things are even better. Earlier, we were expecting a EBITDA drop 
of about 25%. Now we expect it to go down only by 8 to 10%. The second point, however, I want to make is that this improvement is not uniform. So if you can look at the top line of the revenues, uh, clearly the bigger companies are doing well. So if I look at the top 100 companies, the fall in the first half uh, in revenues was just about 10%. If I look at the next 100, that number goes down to minus 20. And beyond that, it goes to minus 25 to 30%. Similarly, on profitability, a few sectors are really driving uh, this better than expected performance. So sectors like telecom obviously have done well. But surprisingly, sectors like steel and cement have also done very, very well. And this is not driven by so much by volume, but more importantly by prices. So if I look at steel, prices are up surprisingly by almost 30% on a year on year basis. Uh, the third point in terms of the outlook for FY22, on this very low base, certainly we expect a very, very sharp optical recovery. We expect revenues to grow by 20% and EBITDA to grow by 25%. I think the point, however, to note is that uh, despite this very, very strong optical recovery, volumes in many sectors will remain below what they were in FY18 or FY19. Thank you, Prasad and DK, for laying out a very clear uh, uh, backdrop to the budget. Now, given all of this, DK, what do you think are the critical priorities from a macro perspective for this budget? Well, Deepti, the budget is more about doing more with less, uh, which essentially means that less there are less fewer resources and you have to use them judiciously. This is a health crisis, so health is the foremost priority right now. Sooner we get COVID-19 under control, sooner will the recovery become stronger and also broad-based. So the health spending will put an extraordinary demand on the exchequer uh, in the coming fiscal, and this cannot be compromised. The second is uh, support to the economy. Uh, the, we are in a recovery phase and uh, the supply constraints have somewhat uh, come down. And clearly government needs to support the demand via, it will do it via income transfers, Manrega, uh, rural infrastructure, etc. I think so. These are the key instruments, and I think they will remain the key instruments even in the in the in the coming fiscal year. Uh, the third thing that I would like to point out here is that budget needs to also correct some of the anomalies or the dichotomies in the in the economy which have got amplified. Uh, the urban poor haven't got much support, so they need to be supported by some sort of a scheme uh, which uh, which could be transitory in nature. It also needs to provide uh, support to the services, for instance, in hospitality, in tourism. Uh, these will take much, much longer to revive. And uh, uh, for these segments, the policy clearly needs to act as a bridge, uh, which will take uh, these, uh, these parts of services towards the recovery phase. And this can be done by providing payroll support. It, could be it can also be done by providing credit uh, at cheaper prices, which government is already doing, and or in a way, in some way, incentivizing people in, uh, or the companies in these segments to retain staff. And then finally, I think the support to small enterprises is also very critical. So, uh, and the fourth and very important point is, what does the budget do to create a platform for raising the growth potential of the economy? Clearly, you need lubrication for the economy, which comes from the financial sector. And for that, the recapitalization of banks become very, very important. The reforms, I think, need to be focused on the manufacturing sector because of there is an opportunity coming there uh, from, from uh, firms uh, uh, diversifying away out of China. And then finally, government also needs to lay out a roadmap for revival of public investment, what kind of instruments they are going to use, uh, and, and how I think they are going to fund these investments. I think all these things will be very, very important in this budget. And what it means uh, for fiscal discipline is that we will have to keep the, the FRBM Act in abeyance even for this year. And, uh, but having done that, government will also have to lay out a plan for the next three years, whereby they tell how they're going to normalize the fiscal situation. Yeah. Thanks, DK. So Prasad, uh, uh, DK just spoke about a couple of key focus areas for the budget in terms of how it can support the nascent recovery, one of which is also supporting investments. What is your view on that? What can the budget do? Also, do you see the CapEx cycle seeing any kind of a turnaround anytime soon? So on the investment side, certainly reviving private CapEx should be a priority. Uh, however, given that direct tax rates have already been brought down, there is GST, 
I don't think there is too much from a budget perspective, from a taxation angle that can be done. However, I think there are two areas where certainly budget can do something. So one is certainly ensuring that public sector banks are well capitalized. If you've seen in the past, a lot of funding for projects has traditionally gone from public sector banks balance sheet. So that is important. However, also we have seen in the past that ultimately it results into some challenges if the underwriting is not done well. And the asset liability mismatch also can also be another issue. So somewhere I think there has been a talk about possibly setting up a dedicated DFI structure which will have long-term liabilities and therefore can undertake project funding. So something on that side also might be very useful. Thank you, Prasad and DK, for discussing these very critical issues uh, with us today. That concludes this conversation. Thanks for watching.